Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Blaze, aka Ace Blazer, and this is a Europa Barbarum historical battle. 209 BC, and I am Antiochus the Great. This is the battle on the river Arius, and the enemy forces are the Bactrians. So, let's start this battle off with a charge. And I'll explain everything later once I finish up this little skirmish. Here's my companion cavalry, and these are the Bactrian cataphracts. Um, in this game, I think the companion cavalry are a little... I think the cataphracts are a bit better than the companion cavalry, because the cataphracts have much more armor. But I think because, uh, you know, the companion cavalry will have much less, uh, uh, what do you call it? They'll be able to fight much longer. So much more general. And Tigus the Great himself. And Tigus was very brave and brave general. Often he'd go into cavalry charges from the front, and that might actually be his downfall in a lot of his battles, like the Battle of Raffia and the Battle of uh, Magnesia, I think. Yeah, uh, he would often charge with the cavalry, but then go on a bit too far with himself, leaving his phalanx behind. <laughs> and uh, that's mostly what happened in those battles where he lost. You might notice that my cavalry are using swords. These are in the EP game. They're armor-piercing swords, and they have a better, faster uh, animation. In Rome Total War, actually, sword animations for the cavalry are much faster. So you always got to switch to your sword arm. If you check the, uh, the game files, you'll see that the, the primary weapon is uh, the spear weapon is much slower than the sword. It's also got one more attack, so it gives you a bit of a difference in these long melees. Alright, so my main army is the core of Aguirre Spidae, the Silver Shield Phalanx, the High Pacifist Die. These are the Royal Guard. They would fight in the manner of Greek hoplites. And two units of Persian archers. Here my reinforcing cavalry. And I'll show you the main back army later. This little bit would be the skirmishing uh, scouting force of the Bactrians. Yeah, so this would be a scouting force. What happened is, uh, the Bactrian general, his name was, uh, Euthydemus. Okay, I'll just let this play out first. Alright, there they go. Let me just organize this first. So, uh, this battle, River Arius, is anti part of Antiochus' march to Bactria. What happened is, uh, after his conquest in Parthia, he moved on to Bactria to try to reclaim it when it declared its independence. Uh, in the lead of the Bactrian army was Euthydemus, who actually uh, took over from the usurpers who seceded from Bactria. Uh, due to the short time that they were, uh, that, that uh, they, did, they weren't really, a they weren't aware until Antiochus was marching to Bactria that there was an army coming. So what they did was they uh, they sent an only cavalry army, a pure cavalry army. Not many people know what this army might have consisted of, but it's most likely a lot of cataphracts, a lot of horse archers, because as you know, Bactria is borders with the nomads and the steppe peoples. So here are the horse archers, all armored. Most likely armored to give themselves an advantage over the nomads. And here's the general's bodyguard, his general Euthydemus, if that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. And then some Hellenic cataphracts, most likely in their battles against the Parthians. We've had the cataphracts. Okay, and Antiochus the Great had units, his core of silver shields, his elite phalanxes. Just set them up. Some support uh, units, probably some Persian archers. And his Hippaspis Dia, the Royal Guard. And then, of course, his Royal Guard of Companion Cavalry. And actually, in, in history, in that little skirmish, Antiochus was. Uh, 
think he was injured some sort, but he still managed to fight on his horse, come back for the main battle. And I'm leaving this force over here because in real life, uh, Tigus left one of his generals here to command the reserve cavalry force. So this is how I am laying it out, the same as uh, in history. Alright, here's speed eye. So I'll tell you what the, the result of the real battle was after I finish up here. Right. If Paspistai in Alexander's time would have been like some sort of a special forces unit, they'd be employed as special infantry to exploit gaps, do uh, special maneuvers. They were his elite uh, infantry. I think second only to his companion cavalry. This is the only army standing between uh, Antiochus and Bactria. And due to uh, mobility issues, this was most of what Antiochus could bring, or wanted to bring, to make sure his army was uh, small and uh, mobile. Only his most more elite troops came with him. So, other forces I've got are some Hippocontus Dai. These are Hellenic skirmisher cavalry. And Prodromoi, Pro these are the medium cavalry. These would be some of the more lighter cavalry that the successors would have had. The Diadochi. Yeah, in my opinion, Antiochus was probably one of the more famous, the most one of the most competent brave generals in the Diadochi era. Maybe not competent, he did lose a few major battles like Magnesia and Raphia, but he was definitely very brave. He got himself injured many times. Always led from the front of the cavalry charge, like a true Macedonian general. Now, you gotta wonder why Antiochus was called the Great, and there are a number of reasons for this. Uh, you gotta remember that at the beginning of the time of the Seleucids, they were uh, of uh, Antiochus's reign. I think he was Antiochus the Third. The em Seleucid Empire was like, in a horror, horrible shape. Uh, the Egyptians were gaining ground. They lost, uh, the Seleucids lost all their uh, land in the east, like Parthia and Bactria, lost their links to India. Uh, so when Antiochus the Great came in, or Antiochus III came in, he did lose the battle in Egypt, the Battle of Raphia, but there were not too many significant gains made by both sides in that war. So it wasn't too big of a disaster, even though, even though it was a big uh, disaster in their military dignity. He did depose his uncle in, a, in Anatolia, Asian Minor, so he managed to secure his uh, western states, and then he went on a long trip all across the east, all the way to India, uh, almost like you could say that he uh, recreated the exploits and conquer, conquests of Alexander himself. So all the way through Parthia, Bactria, then over the Hindu, Hindu Kush. Over the mountains of the Hindu Kush and re-established trade links with the Indians or the, I don't know, whatever you call them, the Punjab region peoples. And, uh, and uh, that's why he's been called great by his contemporaries, because his feats were, his feats were uh, marveled at by both Europeans and Asians. So that's why the contemporary, his contemporaries call him great. He may not be as great as Alexander, but he was definitely a great general. One of the few great generals in the Diadachi era. I suppose I may as well tell you the real result of this battle in history. Uh, yeah, so the enemy, uh, well, the Bactrian horses basically overran most of uh, Antiochus' position. He killed a whole bunch of his bodyguard, and Antiochus himself was like one of the few last men standing. I think he got hit in the jaw by a sword on his helmet or something. And the only thing that held off the cataphracts was the hedgehog of pikes from the Agira Spida, the silver shield. Alright guys, the enemy's coming on. I had to move my formation to meet them. Uh, it's a bit oblique for my liking, but it'll have to do. The phalanxes in this game take a long time to reform, so I just gotta put them down. Hope my flanks can uh, secure, or secure themselves. I've got a bit more of his Paspistai here, who used, who used their, their spears in the secondary attack, so hopefully it's enough. Also, I've got my general here, he should do some stuff. Of course, I'm very low in number right now. Whenever I can, I'll bring back my reserve cavalry. Alright, here they come. Uh, 
Oh, it's gonna hurt. bit further to the right, maybe I can do some sort of rear charge. These cataphracts are penetrating the phalanx a bit, but they're still holding. Their Aguirre speed eye, they can probably hold. They're elite, the most elite phalanx that this faction can get. Alright, let's charge a bit. Nice plasma die held. I think that if the... <laughs> If the bulk of his cavalry went from my right flank instead, they might have been able to overwhelm my his pass his die, but it's uh, too late for As usual, I'll switch to sword attack because of the armor piercing capability and the faster animation. Uh, it looks like they're just about to break through my line. I'm going to bring out my reserve cavalry. And there is uh, left flank is routed, or his left force. Right. Get my Hispasmus die back in formation. Hopefully my main values is still hold. Looks like they're holding well. It's really quite something to see cataphracts break through a phalanx with brute force. Alright, let's do this. Charge! Die. They can definitely do a lot of damage with their spears. The left phalanx is uh, blown through right in the middle. It looks like uh, the skirmisher cavalry hit them in the back. Wait, we still have a lot of numbers left. That's a bit weird. Here we go. These are pretty large numbers, that's interesting. Oh yeah. Oh, here's a general on general fight. Oh, his general's routed. Demas is running away like a coward. Bactria is wide open. Probably get my skirmisher cavalry to chase him down. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not a fair fight here. Skirmisher cab versus cataphracts. But <laughs> they decided to route. Uh, yeah, I'll just end it here. So, clear victory for Antiochus the Great. Euthydemus had only 156 men left in his cavalry army. 
So that's a little interesting battle. It's, it's not every day you get to see a full cavalry army fight, especially in a historical background. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There'll be more to come. See you guys later.